Hello, people. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. Hey there. We're about to watch Mirzapur episode one. So if you're watching this on YouTube, what you're going to see is a cut down version that is no more than 10 minutes because that's the maximum allowed that we're allowed to show. And if you're watching this on Patreon, you'll see the entirety of our reaction uncut, but we won't be showing you the actual show. You'll have to open that up in a separate window side by side with our reaction, so it's like you're watching it with us. I apologize, I know that's not the most convenient, but that's the only way we can do this legally. We can't show any more than 10 minutes of the show, video or audio. Not sure why it works that way, but that's how it is. If you uh, would like access to our full-length reactions, if you're watching this on YouTube, do consider you know, being a patron for our, our Patreon page. Uh, that's uh, patreon.com slash Jabby Kawai. Jabby Kawai. For a second there, I second-guessed myself and thought it was Encore Jabby, but that's just like the name on the actual Patreon page. Anyway, thanks so much for being here and hanging out with us. And here we go, episode one of Mirzapur. Who collects the money after? Where the does it go? The bride and groom. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's the point. It's for the bride and groom. You know, I oh will God. admit that um, I didn't know how versatile Abhishek Banerjee was when I first watched yeah. him. He's very versatile. For sure. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was, like, going to go shoot up a bunch of people for, like, no apparent reason. Okay. <laughs> 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 Who are you? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Like, no one can hear it because of. You know, the those bullets come back down. Yeah, exactly. Someone can get hurt. Oh, God. He's probably going to get away with it, too, because of who his dad is. It's time to GTFO, guys. Friend with you. <laughs> wow. That's sick in the head. That guy is seriously messed up. Um, I'm surprised no one tried to tackle him. But I guess... He's got a gun. And, like... I don't know if everyone there already knows who he is, or if they just that guy get didn't that know who he was. The well, one, yeah. the one who he made dance, he had no idea who he was. Or if he, you know, if they just were like, "We know this guy is not right in the head. He's a little bit unhinged and freaky deaky." So let's not. But it's it's interesting how in situations like that, people don't go, "Oh, well, there's more of us than them. So let's just go for it." But I guess everyone's just afraid for their life, right? <laughs> तुमको he reminds me of um, Marlon Brando. Pankaj Trapathi? Yeah. Yeah. Oh I wouldn't. We are right hander. We are left hander. We are going to eat the food and eat the food. Let's try it. Let's try it. Even that guy is like running away. Oh, damn. Ugh, yuck. Yuck, oh, yuck, 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 yuck. Yeah. You don't have to do anything like this. You don't have to do anything like this. You don't have to do it's interesting that he's teaching while chewing tobacco. 
जो बनमानु जैसा अपना शरीर बना रहे हैं oh, yeah. ये एकदम मैच करता है आपकी बुद्धि से अरे दोनों के दोनों मोटे अरे दो साल से फेल हो रहे हैं पंचवर्षीय योजना बनाना है क्या बैठ जाइए लंट कहेंगे हंस कह रहे हो भाई गुरु जी हमें लंड कह रहे हैं और मुंह तोड़ देंगे इनका बाहर अरे वो लंड नहीं कह रहे हैं वो लंट कह रहे हैं इसमें ठ होता है ड नहीं होता है लंट माने दिमाग से गधा जड़ बुद्धि हाँ फिर ठीक दीपू सिंह नाम याद रखिएगा गुड फॉर दीपू सिंह अरे दीपू बाबू अबे अबे दाबो बे जाओ ना नमस्कार मार सर कहा भैया ये आप लोग पीछे क्या देख रहे हैं सिनेमा हो रहा है क्या पढ़िए लिखिए मुन्ना भैया को देख कैसे दौड़ा है इसको चास, चास बार बोल रहे हैं पढ़ने लिखने वाले छात्रों को राजनीति से दूर रहना चाहिए अब हाँ भैया तुम शाम को तुम्हारे लिए कैंटीन में चाय और समोसा नाम ले देना मुन्ना भैया अंडे करा दीजिए पचास अच्छा शरीर बनाए हो अब कोई हमको छेड़ेगा तो बचा लोगी बस यही काम रह गया ना बुड्डू भैया को लड़कियों को बचाए <laughs> एक बॉडीगार्ड गार्ड कहा रख लेती है बनोगे हमारे बॉडीगार्ड हॉट डिग्री डॉग छूना नहीं हमको कभी विदाउट परमिशन पापा को बता दिए तो बहुत कूटे जाओगे तुम पता है ना पुलिस में तो बाकी हम दूल्हा के मामा हैं और ये हमारे जीजा जी दूल्हा इन्हीं का लड़का था वकील साहब आप केस तो लेंगे ना तो तुमने वकील लोग मना कर दिए तो आइए दिखाइए जरा They they've uh, did a good job establishing him. Yeah. I like him already. Yeah. लड़का गोली चलाया है हमारी आंख के सामने ये लड़का तब तो पक्का लेंगे ये केस हम अभी कुछ दिन पहले बारात में एक दूल्हे को ही ठोक दिया गुंडा लोग तो उनके पापा मामा चाह रहे हैं हम केस लड़े उनका हम कर चाहे आपकी फैमिली पर डेंजर क्यों ना आ जाए बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लोगों को जस्टिस फस्टिस दिलाना था तो नहीं ना करनी थी शादी अरे फैमिली का चिंता नहीं होता तो ये गन लेते हैं हम अभी दिन बाय फ्रॉम चपाती किसी वकील के पास गन हैप्पी बर्थडे वी डू दिस ऑल बैकवर्ड्स आई नो सी तो जल्दी आ नमस्ते आंटी अरे वहां कहा अंकल है प्रणाम वकील साहब ओ सॉरी हम मुन्ना मुन्ना त्रिपाठी डिम्पी अंदर जाओ अरे ये क्या बात हुई डिम्पी वेट डिम्पी अंदर क्यों जाएगी पांडे जी गलत बात है डिम्पी तुम्हें काम करो तुम आके बैठो इधर आओ कम डिम्पी यहां पर तो देखिए पंडित जी पापा आपके लिए गिफ्ट लाए हैं स्कूटर नहीं बेचेंगे कम से कम सेफ्टी का तो जो आंटी कितने हैं और भी लोग हैं पर <laughs> तो बात ऐसी है कि अब आप उस लड़के के घर वालों से नहीं मिलेंगे समझे और जो नहीं समझे हो तो क्या करोगे क्या बात है तो एक हंगल सोच के आए थे आप तो बहन से बच्चन निकले आ, क्या बात है एक बात बड़ी गर्मी है आपकी लौंडिया कोई लड़का देखे हैं कि नहीं और अगर नहीं 
हमारे पास भिजवा दीजिए जितनी गर्मी है हम उतार इनके बाप कौन है जानते हैं ना अखंडानंद त्रिपाठी That's some sharp ass cutlery. <laughs> Oh no, don't kill, don't kill the sun, don't kill the sun, don't kill the sun. You're out of bullets. Alright. Opportunities now. Dude, just call this a wash. He's not gonna call it a wash. Nope. He's pissed now. What, what are you, you gonna do? You know, They've got like machine guns. I think that's just where it ends. Oh, really? They're gonna show us? Okay, cool. Kalin, bhaiya, bula hai. Chaliye. Ham chalte jaabi bula hai. Aapko nahi. In dono ko. Damn. Whoa. Wow. That was an excellent pilot episode. Yeah, like um, it sets it up so well. That's intense. You know what this kind of reminds me of is the Ozark because it's introducing that family element. And I've, I've, up until this, that was the only show I'd seen that really brought the mafia scene and the family scene together right. in a very strong way in like really showing you the trials and tribulations of a teenager and of an adult at the same time and of the mafia world and making it all fused together. Obviously it was really focused on Jason Bateman's character more than anybody else, but still. And so here we have a similar situation where it's showing you the inner workings of all these different worlds and what each of these characters are putting up with and how it's all kind of coming into a head together. This is a great setup for the series in general. Ali Fazal, I just gotta shout him out, man, he's doing, I mean, Pankaj Tripathi is obviously an excellent actor and we've said that many times. We watched him in Sacred Games and a number of films and it's like, he's just always bringing the A game. He's just a super talented dude. He, I, To me, he's up there with the likes of Anoj Bajpayee, of Nawazuddin Siddiqui and, and whatnot. I'm a fan of his for sure. He has a very Marlon Brando-esque look and behavior about him that I like. But Ali Fazal, like the last time we saw him was like the romantic lead. And here we're seeing him as that, that muscle head, juggernaut sort of dude. He, at the same time, he's a gentle giant and he plays that so, yeah. so well because from the thing we saw him uh, from before. Bang Baja Bara. Yeah. Night and day difference between these characters, yeah. right? Overall, like the look of it, the way it's shot musically, like earlier I was saying, it, well, while we were watching the show, that it's very Asian in how it kind of moves between the tones, which is what Asian filmmakers are more comfortable with than American filmmakers. You watch something like, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the director. He won, he won Best Director for Bong Parasite. Bong Joon-ho? Yeah, Bong Joon-ho, he, when he did um, The Host. There's a scene where the family, the main the main character, is the family's crying over the loss of this kid, you know, this kid gone, has gone missing or eaten by a monster, and they're crying, and at first you're upset, and then they fall on the floor just crying so hysterically that you kind of laugh because it's so much right? right and so as this kind of aloof third person perspective you can't help but sort of laugh at this what is supposed to be tragic for them asians are just comfortable going between those two tones and here they're doing it but they're doing it in a way that's more pulled back and so it still feels like one uh cohesive story one cohesive tone even though it's got a broad tone that it's go or two you know different tones that it's going between hopefully i'm making some sort of sense here i like it a lot i think that it's 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 very unique in that way at the same time you're also introducing philosophies like you get from scarface or the godfather you know never take sides against the family is something that you hear in godfather and or uh, whatever like there's all kinds of i'm i'm sure there's a litany of of, of uh, philosophy that you could find from both of those stories and here you're getting the same thing even though pankaj tripathi's character is the villain in this show, he's one of the main characters, he's espousing some interesting philosophy that even though he's the villain, 
you still can take that with you and learn something from it. And so on top of all this good drama, on top of the good writing and the well-developed characters, because you really understand who each of these people are, the only one that I'm not sure about is maybe the younger brother. Ali Fazal's younger brother? Yes. Okay. Like, he's well-defined. He's the, he's the you know, clean-cut, book nerd sort of kid with scholastic ambitions is the easy, easiest way to put it. But I still don't know that I feel his character like the way I feel Ali Fazal's character or even Dimpy. She had, had way less to do, but I still have a very strong three-dimensional sense as to her character more than the scholastic kid. The mom, the the, the, the lawyer is very well developed. Right from the kickoff, like, you see exactly who this guy's about and then the wife drops it so, like a gem in the dialogue she's like if you wanted to be this dude you shouldn't have gotten married and it's right. like a hey, damn straight because you see the consequences like her between her line and the consequences arriving is a very short time span and it makes sense and it really hits home and you can see exactly where the lawyer's head's at like everything he has believed in so profoundly so strongly he has to now question and decide if he if he has to walk back on his beliefs or maintain his pride in his hubris and continue forward with this path like this is an excellent pilot episode because it leaves you with questions it gives you a lot to play with it's great i don't really have anything much more to add to that i mean yes the setup was fantastic i i think like you really understand the world and where the characters are coming from the status pankaj Tripathi's character who coincidentally is also called Tripathi. There's a whole dynasty there. They are very well respected, I guess, or well, I guess more accurately feared in, in that town. And so you have all of these conflicts set up. The reveal of the lawyer being the father of the kids was also really cool because then you have that additional layer of like complexity and conflicts there and stakes and yeah. all that. So they, they've just written this really well and you're so drawn into the drama and it's gripping. And and now it's just like, well, what's going to happen next? And why why is he asked for the sons instead of the lawyer? It kind of makes me think that he's got a more diabolical plan up his sleeve. But then again, Colleen Tripathi doesn't seem like the type of person who doesn't think his actions through. His son is the more impulsive one. He's the one that just accidentally killed a man getting married and now they're gonna have to face consequences i'm just like well, what's he gonna do now because he's he and pankaj Dipathi does this so well he has this really great air of menace mm -hmm. doing hardly anything at all he just sits there and you're like hey he's scary well we were talking about that the other day with hayram where it requires a lot of confidence to be able to do something like that mm -hmm where you do very little and you communicate volumes. It takes a very, very confident and competent actor to know when to take those breaths, those pauses, and make that lingering air of silence be loud with power. Yeah. You know, it takes a very confident actor to do that. Well-studied actor. I mean, he's obviously excellent, like we established earlier. The actor they chose for his son is very, very well-casted, because mm -hmm. uh, I buy him as the spoiled heir to the throne of a mafia empire. And Abhishek Banerjee, as his second in command, is very, very strong as well. We have the advantage of having seen him so much, doing so many different roles. As the second in command, I buy him. The way he walks, the way he behaves, the way he responds and reacts to people, the way he doles out or, uh, orders. He just really embodied that character very, very well. The scene between the grandfather, uh, Colleen Tripathi, and then Munna Tripathi, is this thing that my friends have often talked about that you'll find in families where you have one generation with the great wealth, and then it's passed down to the son being Colleen Tripathi, right? And that kid saw the struggles and the trials and tribulations of their father or like their parents and so they understand the level of privilege that they're in and the work that goes behind it and then you have the next generation being Munna Tripathi and he was born into power right. and that's all he's known so he's entitled and spoiled and then that's right. usually when shit starts to happen and things start to unravel. Well he has no respect for the hustle. Exactly. Is what it comes down to. Whereas Pankaj Tripathi has absolute respect for the hustle and he's very calculated. What I'm anticipating is that when he meets the sons, his objective isn't to harm them. His objective is to convince them, to convince his their, their father to go a different path, to go a different direction. And they're gonna try 
and the father is going to have to make up his... Obviously, in order to continue the suspense of this show, his father is going to stay on course. And how do you do that? Like, how do you protect your family and stick to your principles at the same time? Yeah. It's nigh impossible. What the writers have set up here, to me, is a very high bar for the remainder of the show. Like, how do you... Where do you go from here and keep it real, keep it suspenseful, and not go outside of the realm of um, believability? This is incredibly challenging writing, in my opinion. The only thing I think I take issue with is I understand the need for showing violence and not shying away from it. I, I'm a huge fan of Martin Scorsese's gangster films or his mafia films. I love those movies and they, they do get violent. You should be selective about your violence. When you just keep showing it like very graphically all at the surface and you don't leave anything to the imagination, you start to get desensitized to the violence. Now, yeah. thankfully so far, it's only been in the first act of the show. All of the violence in the show does have meaning, I should say that. They showed the guy who was the groom, his eye got shot out, mm -hmm. it had meaning, cause yes. and effect, right? There, th this happens and there's, a, there's an equal and opposite reaction in the show. They set up the thing with the guns, I haven't seen how that's gonna come back around yet, but, they, but the wife did mention you can get guns for 1,500 rupees. The violence is so much. And they even have it in the opening of the show, just like the opening titles show violence. I don't know whose choice that was, if that was like the filmmakers or if that was Amazon that decided to do that. For me, it's like, I'm, I like to be selective about my violence unless you're doing something like a John Woo film where it's just like animation, it's a cartoon. They've pushed it a little too far for me with the violence, but it has still been appropriate in that it's with purpose. It's just setting the tone, I think. Like from the get-go, being that bold with the violence is telling us, hey, this is what you're in for. This is a violent show. I get it. And uh, now you know that. Yeah. Strap in, let's go. You used the word bold, and I don't think it's bold anymore. I think it's more bold to leave things to the imagination is what I'm trying to say. Everything on Netflix and Amazon is willing to show you the violence now. They're yeah. all trying to be HBO. And I'm like, okay, I, I, we, can, we know you can do that. Can you do the opposite and make it in here instead of showing me everything? You know what I mean? That's yeah, all I'm no, saying. Yeah, no, I get it. But they did a great job of, of really ramping up the suspense in that last part of the episode where everyone was like struggling for the guns and she had the gun in her hand. Yeah. They did something very different here because you don't normally see a mom or even a female character actually shoot the gun to good effect with a good consequence that comes out of it. Because normally they're like, ah, and they shoot at the window or something. Like nothing, a, a very nothing result will usually come of that. And here, there was actually strength in the women in the show. Dimpy, she sat down where she wanted to sit down. The mom actually shot at the guy and blew off part of his ear. And then Dimpy threw the tea on Abhishek Banerjee's chest. Like the women are actually kind of fierce and I enjoy that. But it's still done in such a way that I buy that. It's not like done in such a way that's outlandish like a, a, a atomic blonde. Like, it's still within the realm of believability the way they handled that. Right. I thought that was excellent. Yeah. I guess that's it. Like, the music was really good, the way it's shot and edited, everything. You really get a sense as to what characters are feeling. For the most part, they're very well-rounded and, and made to be three-dimensional. Like, you really get each of them. I like it. I'm I, I, enjoying it. Great first episode. Hopefully, the rest of the show maintains that momentum and maintains that strength. So you guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and thanks so much for hanging out. Please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and hit that bell icon, all notifications and check us out on Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. Also, uh, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Really, really appreciate that. It means a lot. And that's it for now. I'm Jabby Kuei. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.